all right buenos dias mis amigos all right so today i'm gonna just go a little bit over what dr gene kim says and then i'm going to show you how easy it is to see the truth of the bible all right so i'm going to expose this guy's ignorance and then i'm going to make it easy for you to see the truth okay and um you know somebody gets mad then good let them be mad but uh, uh before i get into that real quickly i want to uh, just for anybody that even might care uh, this person uh, leaves a, a comment here and it's held for review now uh, i appreciate all these comments i really do um, a lot of great stuff here and uh, certainly uh, encourage people to leave comments absolutely I enjoy every one of them and uh, as you saw yesterday I like to talk I like to go over your comments I really enjoy doing that but this one got held for review and it's because it's got a blocked word and I just want to show you real quickly that the reason why that comment is blocked and it's you know I don't expect everybody to know this but just in case somebody was wondering in my about section I got my rules for banning now, I'm not gonna ban this person but um, I won't approve the comment let me just read this abject retardation use of the F word misquoting scripture abuse of language of any kind personal attacks against others promotion of false ideology spamming comments now of course I don't ban people uh, for any of the stuff back you'd have to understand uh, you know uh, nine years ago or what however long ago I would get a lot of comments and people were just out of control so I had to get very strict with the comments that I allowed so I got very strict with my policy now hardly nobody watches my video so I don't have to be as strict so that's a good thing um, but right here where it says uh, you know using all caps people who seek to debate calling somebody dude or using the word concave so in my restriction my blocked words list I have the word dude so if you use the word dude your comment will be held for review and to me that that is a disrespectful way to talk to somebody to communicate with somebody to call them dude all right now when I was in junior high school that's how kids talked I ain't in junior high school all right and so I don't find it appropriate you know I'm not from California. I don't got the long hair. I don't go surfing. I ain't no dude. I, to me, I, I, I just don't like it. I think it's disrespectful. Um, so that's that's why I have that in there. We're not kids, all right. This, this stuff that that I enjoy talking about and communicating with you guys about. This is not kid stuff. Right, that and that word, that use of the word "dude," that's kid stuff. So, uh, so let's get into the Bible real quick. See, uh, right before I'm going to show you a, a short clip of Gene Kim talking about this idea of uh, people living after the end of the world, which is, doesn't make any sense. real quickly what is this here let's see if I can find a verse before I get started here just to get us started first Corinthians 13 verse 11 when I was a child I spake as a child I said do this and do that dude come on dude where you at dude see I don't I don't dig it I don't dig it. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. All right. So hopefully, I made my point clear. 
in case anybody might be confused I ain't no dude and I ain't gonna I ain't gonna tolerate that word you know we can have disagreements and stuff but let's be respectful alright to me that's uh yeah, that's kid stuff right there it's time to grow up be a man we're going to look at verse 16 it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. Did you read that? So notice that, remember, do you remember Revelation 19? Or did you forget that? Revelation 19, which took place over here. Now, let, God me, let me just pause this and let's look at his board here. This is every bit as nonsensical as... Robert Breaker's whiteboard. I, I look at this and I think, what in the H-E double hockey sticks is going on? This is The Bible's not this complicated. I'm going to show you. It's real easy. I mean, it's really, real, really easy to understand the end of the world. This stuff here, this is fantasy land stuff. This is sci-fi stuff. This is what you get when you watch Hollywood movies. This is nonsense. This is ignorance. Now, the, I get it. This is popular. 99% of all the preachers in the world today are preaching this g garbage. This is absolute baloney. It's wicked. It's as evil as anything being taught in the world today, including evolution. And I'm going to show you. All right, but so yeah, Old Testament, His resurrection. You got the Church, Christ, tribulation, saved, rapture. You got the rapture here, and you got the resurrection there, and you got the second death way over here, and you got kingdoms over here in between, and Israel and the a millennialism, premillennialism, 100 years old child, sinner. This is to me saying I have no idea what the Bible says, so I'm going to try to throw a bunch of stuff around and just move on to the next subject sounds great heck I don't know you don't know when nobody knows well I'm gonna show you so you can know and it's easy but real quickly that was uh, in Armageddon against the nations right and then also he had to do judgment of nations do you remember that Matthew 25 do you recall that but when he's judging the nations, see that? That's the word. Zechariah says... I'm just waiting for him to cross the line, okay? He's going to cross the line here in a moment. Just relax. All right. Try to be a little bit fair about this. We're going to go to 20. We're going to go to 25. Left. Because he brought it up. Now I'm going to show you how easy this stuff is simple it's not rocket science of all the nations so it's not everybody so there are gonna be leftovers here there it is crossing the line there's gonna be leftovers left behind Nicholas Cage yeah yabba dabba do so you don't even have to believe in Jesus he just crossed the line what he's teaching is that you don't have to believe in Jesus. You can wait until after Jesus comes in the clouds. Then you can believe. And no. That's a problem. That's a big problem. That's cruelty. That is absolute cruel teaching. It's a cruel and wicked doctrine to say, no, you don't have to believe in Jesus today. You can wait until after he comes in the clouds to believe in him. There's nothing more cruel you could teach a child than that right there. And so you hear me day after day talking about this stuff and you do you wonder why I get so fired up about this? Think of this fellow right here teaching your child that he can wait until after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then when Jesus comes he says nope it's too late this man lied and you should have believed the Bible you can't wait 
Hey, you know, why? Why in the world are you so desperate to teach Hollywood movies and sci science fiction? This None of this here lines up with scripture. So let's go to 25. It's Matthew ch chapter 25, okay? So where are we at here? Let me see here. Oh. Oh, right there it is. Verse 31. Jeez. I mean, it's as, as clear as day. I mean, all throughout the Bible, we're hearing the same thing being taught. But let's go over this. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We just read this in Matthew 24. When the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Right, just like we read in Revelation 1, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, his angels gather together his elect. Right? When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on the right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Right, and... Um, Let's see if I can find something here. Then shall I say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. All right. So this is this has given us a, a parable or an analogy, however you want to look at it, for what we can expect. Um, you know what's going to happen, and we get a same sort of parable. It's not a there's no contradictions here. A word of him cannot be broken. The word of God cannot be broken. A bone of him cannot be broken. Now, in Matthew 13, there's the parable of the wheat and the tares. This is, in my opinion, the simplest and easiest way to understand the end of the world. All right, so the harvest, oops. Oh, I got the wrong. Is that, that's Mark, not Matthew. All right, let's go to Matthew 13. The parable of the wheat and the tares. The harvest is the end of the world. What happens at the harvest? Well, at, when the harvest comes, then the wheat are gathered into the Lord's barn, and the tares are thrown into the fire. It's the same thing that we're reading here in uh, Matthew 25 I wonder if I should real quickly just um, which one of these shall I uh, let me just I guess do this for now let's do it this way all right sort of highlight that now uh, the harvest is the end of the world <laughs> that's it you need that's everything you need to know right there well, you telling me Jesus didn't understand it? Jesus didn't know. He didn't. He couldn't explain it very well. So what we need is a whiteboard with all this garbage. This does this help you to understand the end of the world? Seriously, can you make any sense of that? But Jesus says very simply, the harvest is the end of the world. At the end of the world. The wheat, which is the saved, are gathered into my barn. The tares are thrown, are bound in bundles and thrown into the fire. In Matthew 25, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, his sheep are the saved. The goats are the unsaved. The wheat are gathered in the barn. The tares are are thrown into the fire it's that simple it's not rocket science when this happens it's the end of the world 
I mean, Jesus is asked in Matthew 24 that very question. What is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the end of the world happens when he comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end. You cannot have unsaved people living after the end of the world. All right, so let's start off in Revelation 1. Um, this thing is echoed all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Maybe we should start in Genesis and then go to Revelation. So in Genesis 3, verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is the end of of the world it's the same thing that we're reading in Matthew 25 and in Mark 13 it's the very same thing when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory okay this is the end of the world all right, when Jesus separates the sheep from the goat, when he separates the wheat from the tares, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he separates the saved from the unsaved. It's judgment day. It's the great day of the Lord. In Joel chapter 2, it talks about the great and terrible day of the Lord. It's great for us, right? It's going to be terrible for them that are not saved. All right. Let me see if I got the right chapter here. I'm just I'm just curious here. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Just like we read in Matthew 24, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear Jesus in the clouds of heaven and every eye will see him and all the earth all the tribes of the earth shall mourn just as we read in Luke 21 where it says men's hearts will be failing them for fear why because they know it's the end of the world so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world this stuff here this is garbage. This is nonsense. This is saying, I have no idea what the Bible says, so I'm going to talk and talk and talk and then scribble this and scribble that, and then at the end of it, you're not going to know what in the heck he was talking about. You're not. And it's not what Jesus says when asked about the end of the world. When he, there should be, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and then a line, and that's, that line's the end of the world. And there's no thousand years coming after that. You don't have a thousand bonus years where you have another opportunity to have sex. You don't have a thousand, uh, you know, you, the, I've, I don't know what I just said. You don't have a bonus thousand years, all right? That's it. Where you don't have another opportunity to be saved. You, and it's not a, like the video I showed the other day where uh, the gentleman was saying that, talking about procreation in the thousand years after the end of the world it's gonna be like he's in his 30 year old body he's gonna be strong he's gonna be procreating like never before or whatever and this is delusional stuff and, and so I wonder sometimes is that why people are teaching this is this why people want to believe in it they want to believe that they're going to be in the superhuman body procreating left and right well as it says in uh, 1st John chapter 2 I think I, I don't remember uh, it was a 3 uh, I don't remember what's it say all that is in the world all that is all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away 
and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The world is going to pass away when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, when he separates the sheep from the goat, when he separates the wheat from the tares, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, this is when Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever and ever, and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall be raised first. All right, so let's go to Matthew 24 just to give an idea because Jesus is asked, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven. It's the end of the world. All right, when he comes in the clouds of heaven and the angels shall gather together his elect and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet all right for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God it's the end of the world that's it and if you can understand when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world you got it you figured it out with these guys these kids they can't figure this out and I don't know I, I don't know why I don't know why they want to believe Nicolas Cage in these Hollywood movies why they take that over the Word of God is beyond me the only thing that I can think of is that they don't trust the Bible that they hold in their hands that's the only thing they would rather trust what men say than what the Word of God says and this is a problem man this is a big problem and, but you know it's interesting because this is exactly what the Bible says would happen you know when Jesus is asked what is the sign of thy coming of the end of the world the very first thing he says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and so what do we got in the world today a whole bunch of people out there saying that they believe Jesus is the Christ and don't worry when it comes in the clouds of heaven it's not the end of the world you get another th thousand years an opportunity to be saved you know thousand bonus years you can have sex and do all this dirty stuff you'll have and the other thing is I think they want they want to believe there's coming a time when they'll have power and authority over the unsaved and they can boss them around that's what I think because you'll hear them say well there'll be people in their immortal bodies living among people in their mortal bodies and they say they will be reigning and ruling over the mortals and procreating like the video I showed you the other day this stuff is nonsense absolute garbage nonsense and so uh, again if you understand that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world here in Revelation chapter 1 let's see it says here something or another behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him that means even those that have died will see him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him why because everybody's gonna know it's the end of the world all right so in first uh, Thessalonians 4 right and with the trump of God the dead shall in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord this is it that's it when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world anybody that teaches anything different is a liar and a deceiver and there's a whole bunch of them out there 
a whole bunch of them. They don't know what the truth is. They don't believe the Bible. They just listen to what other preachers say. This fellow here, he's not getting this stuff from, from the Bible. He's getting it from another man who had taught him this junk. And he believed it rather than believing what the Bible plainly says. Just like, uh, you know, the parable of the wheat and the tares, the shepherd that divides the sheep from the goats, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the angels gather together his elect, and then, of course, uh, then it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And when we have changed, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So you can't have unsaved people crossing that line. When it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. How hard is that to understand? Well, yeah, but Nicholas Cage said this, and the Hollywood movie says that. Well, that's too bad that you believe the lie. It really is. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that Jesus is the resurrection, the first resurrection, right? For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming we will be resurrected at his coming that's our resurrection he is the resurrection he even says I am the resurrection and you can't figure that out it's incredible you don't know who the resurrection is Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die believest thou this revelation 20 this is not hard to understand it's hard to understand when you're believing what other men say but if when you go, when you read it and you see that hey an angel came down from heaven this is a this is a vision given to john to show us things which must shortly come to pass. All right, just as it says in Revelation chapter 1. All right. And when he lays hold of the dragon, which is the devil and Satan, and bounds him in a thousand years, this is undoubtedly making a distinction between the time before Jesus came to the time of right now. So, the fact that he has to be bound implies and suggests that he was loose before. When was he loose? Well, he was loose and able to, to deceive the nations when there was only one nation of God. And that one nation was gathered into one country, one group of people. Outside of that one nation, all the other nations were deceived but here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him alright and we read about that in, in first Peter chapter 2 so let's go there you know the lady the other day said I'm not very well studied I don't study this I'm done exposing myself I'm hanging myself by, say, by showing people that I'm, I'm not studied in this stuff. And there's no doubt I've got no reason to stop studying. But in First Peter chapter 2, which in time past were not a people, so we are the chosen generation. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are that kingdom of priests. As we read in Exodus 19, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. 
these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. In 1 Peter chapter 2 it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Jesus says, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. He's talking about us. He's making the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. So now, Satan is bound. Alright, so he can't go out and deceive the nations like he did in the Old Testament, right? Back in the days of the Old Testament, there was just one group of people and one nation of God. And within that nation of God was the kingdom of God. And outside of that kingdom of God was nations deceived. Okay, so at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loose again. Well, why is that? Well, it's pretty simple. We're up in the air. And so the only people that are left on the earth are unsaved people. So now Satan, he's got free reign to, to do what he wants. And what he wants is to gather them to be, together. To battle against us and so he brings the whole lot of them and he brings them to our feet all right and this is really simple stuff because we know that when Jesus comes in clouds of heaven is it is the end of the world there is no more time for the unsaved to be saved all right so where was I going with this all right, so he gathers together uh, the unsaved at our feet. All right, and so we read about this in Genesis 3, um, where it says, It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, in Psalm 110, for example, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, in Revelation 3, verse 9, it says, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So we're up in the air with the Lord, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. 1 Corinthians 15. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. See, we're up in the air. And then what happens when we're up in the air? Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. That means he's going to destroy all the unsaved forever. In Revelation 20 it says, And they went up on the breath of the earth and campus the camp of the saints about. We that are saved, that we that are born of God, we are the saints. And the beloved city is above. The beloved city is above. Jerusalem, the holy city of God, is above. It's not over there in the Middle East collecting dirt. It's in heaven above. Galatians 4. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, is the mother of us all. What happens at the end of the world? New Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. We are that we are the saints and that beloved city is in heaven. All right, so we're up in the air and our enemy is at our feet and they are gathered and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And this is important because if you understand that and if you believe it, then you know that there is no more unsaved people living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. In other words, this thousand year baloney of, you know, the thousand year period after Jesus comes, that's not true at all. You got that from watching a Hollywood movie. You didn't get that from reading the Bible. All right. So, I, I mean, what more do I need to go over here? Am I leaving anything out? I mean, this is pretty simple stuff, man. 
when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and so in Revelation 20 when it talks about the thousand years it's talking about what's happening right now all right so Satan is bound so we got believers well I'd like to think we got believers all around the world <clears throat> all right now let's get into verse 4 and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them right, it's, that's us that are born of God we are kings and priests unto God I showed you verses of how we are a kingdom of priests and we are a royal priesthood in Revelation chapter 1 it says and he has made us kings and priests unto God now how do you miss that you remember that you remember that you recall that remember that we are kings and priests unto God and they and I saw thrones and they sat upon them that's talking about us we sit on heavenly thrones right now judgment has already been given to us right now whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die we are saved sealed secure sanctified forever that can never ever change all right we have absolute eternal security in the Lord Jesus Christ judgment has already been given to us nothing can take that away I saw the souls of them that were beheaded all right people that had not worshipped the beast and uh, let's talk about us right now I mean we read about John getting beheaded all right the people not worshiping the beast or those who are not putting their faith and trust into the government system they're not leaning on politicians to save them they're leaning on the Lord Jesus Christ to save them and there are not very many of them around I don't think but and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years how can you rightly say that you're saved if you're not living and reigning with Christ right now there's something wrong with your heart if you say no I'm not living and reigning with Christ right now well you by your own words you're saying you're not saved but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection so what is the first resurrection well we just read Jesus says himself I am the resurrection in 1st Corinthians 15 Jesus Christ is the first fruits of them that slept but afterward they that are Christ that is coming all right this is talking about the resurrection and become the first fruits of them that slept <clears throat> come on man this stuff is so easy so simple Jesus is the resurrection we already read that numerous times throughout the Bible you should have already known that. Should have already known that. But the rest of the dead, the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on such the second death has no power whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die the second death has no power over us right now has no power over those of us that are born of God Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me, though he were dead, the second death has no power over you, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over those of us that are born of God. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. 
and shall reign with him a thousand years and has made us kings and priests unto God right now we are kings and priests of God in Exodus 19 they were a kingdom of priests and in first Peter chapter 2 we are a royal priesthood and holy nation we are priests of God and of Christ and we reign with Christ right now we are partakers of his resurrection right now and of course at the end of the thousand years is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up our enemies gathered our feet Jesus stomps his heel on the head of the serpent destroying all evil forever and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so it's real simple when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world it's when he separates the sheep from the goats that's the judgment of God it's when he separates the wheat from the tares it's when he gathers together his elect it's when we are lifted up first the dead in Christ and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord it's the end of the world this world is coming to an end and it happens when Jesus comes in, in the clouds of heaven alright so th I mean, that's it right it's pretty simple and Jesus tried to make it very simple for us numerous times but people don't want to believe what the Bible says they don't they don't and so because they don't believe what God says God says I also will choose their delusions All right. really this stuff here is delusional you can't make any sense of this. What do you got? Two, three, four resurrections? What? And the problem is, of course, you're. It's it to me. It seems like you're rejecting the one resurrection that matters, and that's our Lord Jesus Christ. You're dismissing it, and that's a problem. Without His resurrection we have no hope but thanks be to God he has resurrected from the dead and he has promised to come back for us and it's amazing right it's amazing it's amazing how this is really it's taught all throughout the Bible the very same thing over and over and in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and I prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so watch and so shall we ever be with the Lord and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also this stuff is so simple when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world it's gonna be the end of all corruption all evil all wickedness including death all right if you have any questions uh, if you want to if you want to know why I'm so angry about this stuff 
It's because, look at it this way. You got all these deceivers teaching my children all these lies. So they're teaching your children too. That, hey, you don't have to believe in Jesus today. Wait until, you know, people are just magically disappeared in this magical uh, rapture, just like you see in a movie. And then you can start to believe. And I'm telling you, there are a lot of people out there that are holding to that view. I'm not going to believe it until I see it. And the wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto them but the sign of Jonas. All right, so I don't want to... I don't want to get into that. I'll, I'll go another hour if I get into this stuff here. This is it's just incredible how everything in the Bible lines up. And it's all very simple. The problem isn't knowledge. It, the problem isn't going to school. You don't go to schools you don't know. No. The problem is people aren't believing the Bible that they hold in their hands. And you read Hebrews 11. It's all about faith man if you want to understand the Word of God you must have faith 